So now I want to talk to you about um, how you can use the definition of comic to create very original um, ideas for your own comic. This is Will Eisner, who is like the grandfather of uh, comics. He defined comic as sequential art, and in my opinion, the art can be anything. It can be sculpture, ink, watercolor, painting, pencil, mosaic, anything. And then afterwards, Scott McCloud came along. And this is a British joke. <laughs> we say in a nutshell when we are um, making something simple, so I have literally put him in a nutshell, doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, I will tell you a little bit about how he defined comics. So um, he talked uh, about, he said, well, I the definition doesn't work. Um, so he came up with a new definition, plural and form, used as a singular verb, juxtaposed pictorial and other images in deliberate sequences intended to convey information and or to produce an aesthetic response in the viewer. If you can <laughs> but Scott McCloud's definition didn't help to clear up matters all that much. Today we have comics, comics, graphic novels, visual narrative, authorial illustration, sequential art, and bandesine, manga, you know, everything. You guys may think of comics like, like on a paper, um, you read them in a box, speech balloons, that's the traditional comic, but if you look at um, comics according to Scott McCloud or Will Eisner, the definition of um, <coughs> uh, sequential art or juxtaposed position, you can start thinking of comics as many different things. So I'm going to show you some pictures, and I want you to start thinking, is it a comic? Does it show um, narrative in, in sequences? Or is it not a comic? Okay, so first image. Yes or no? Come on, everybody. Is it a comic? Is it not a comic? Not all stained glass windows are comics, but some have a story which is told across, in a sequence, across different pictures. So maybe the story of Jesus or Mary. If it's told sequentially, then yes. But if it's just some designs of, of religious imagery, and I haven't got deliberate sequence conveying a message, then I don't think it is a comic. Okay, next one, let's see. Okay, everybody. This is Warren Craig's autobiographical brick. He starts off as a baby fetus, and then here he is um, cremated in a vase, yeah? It tells his life in sequence, but instead of, um, instead of pictures in sequence, he is using a brick, a 3D object. Okay. Shinkaro Kago, is it a comic? Yes or no? Everybody knows. Comics and comics. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is uh, interesting because uh, manga, you read top right to bottom left. English, you read top left to bottom right. Mm -hmm. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Um, this is like a, a 3D object. Um, but it, it, he just has drawn it, it's not, not an actual sculpture. Mm -hmm. um, but as you turn it round, you, the story becomes something different. So you see the people's faces here. Uh -huh. uh, when you see them from behind, they have people crawling out the back of their head. Yes or no? Is Why it a comic? It was interesting because um, when I showed this image, um, I thought, uh, yes, this is a comic. You can take photographs. Of, um, of comics and tell a story sequentially. But then I looked at the picture and I saw it was one picture of a bar and they just divided it into three. They weren't using the sequence to tell a story across time. <laughs> this. <laughs> is it a comic? Yes or no? <laughs> this is um, what we call a hyper comic. It means you have control as a reader in what path you take in the narrative. So you start off here, which night is this, and then you can go up, or you can go down, or you can go this way. Just like in life, it is your choice. Um, have any of you read uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books? When you fight a dragon, if you want to if you uh, want to fight the dragon, you go to page four. If you want to run away, you go to page 28. 
Do you have those books? Yes. You don't know. Ah. You have, you have read. Yeah. Do you know the name? Is that what you have read? There are some analogs. What? I don't remember, but through the idea and so on, it's something like that. It's an example of um, how you can, you can uh, play a part in reading the story yourself and make a decision. This is an example of Indian comics, mm -hmm. and it shows how uh, different cultures uh, and different countries look at comics in completely a new way. The Indian people looked at comics and they said, um, uh, our life is not in little boxes, our life is open, so we are not going to draw our comics in little boxes. And they said, speech bubbles don't mean anything, we don't, we're going to do it differently. So um, you can see here, when someone said something um, lovely, it is like a bird, but if they say something angry, it is like a scorpion's tail. Mm -hmm. So each country, Manga, America, Bandesine, and France, they bring something new to the medium. Is it a comic? Yes or no? Hand up. Uh, no. <laughs> Not a comic. Um, this is, uh, it, actually, they are very big frames painted by two brothers, and they tell stories and pictures and words across different frames. This is only one example of a, a, a comic, but it is painted with uh, oil paint. Is it a comic? Yes or no? This is a, a British artist called Grayson Perry who likes to dress up like a, a, a woman but in an artistic way. I think there is a narrative in, it, it's like a big uh, carpet, like a tapestry, but I think there is a story in it, but it's not told in a deliberate sequence, maybe. Um, this is a, a, a comic artist, a, a typographer called Ray Fenwick, and he tells stories, but only writing in words. Um, and he does some beautiful stories, conversations and speech bubbles, for example, um, but no pictures, all typography, but they tell stories sequentially. Uh, this is my friend, she is an artist called Karen Rubin, um, and she made these cards here, which you can see, like playing cards, which we will play with later on. Um, and you can hand them out in any order and tell different stories depending on the order you get. And these are some other ideas <laughs> of what could be a comic. Is it a comic? Yes or no? No. But, 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 imagine, imagine if you could, um, on a computer game, if you could go inside a panel, um, for example, if you could go into this panel and you could move around on a computer game and you could, um, you know, speak to the policeman or jump into the river. And uh, this is where video games um, and digital story is where the future is with uh, narrative. Um, people are reading on iPad, Kindle, they're reading digital story and comics um, transfer very well. They can, you can be interactive and you can control your own way you move through the comic. So, so in the future, instead of reading, I don't know, a, a famous story in Russia, Little Red Riding Hood? Yeah. Do you have? Instead of reading Little Red Riding Hood, maybe you will, um, in a video game, go inside the story and meet the wolf and that sort of thing. This is a comic sculpture I made. It is about a woman who is with her husband for all her life. Um, but in the end he dies, and so she turns him into a hat stand. <laughs> uh, this is a comic, um, a sculpture again, pulled across three panels. A, a, a man while sleeping in bed, but it's like he's murdering her, or she's carrying him. This was one when instead of um, panels, I turned them into a frame on a wall, and the character moved in between, climbed into the different frames. And this was a doll's house, which you read, remember, top left to bottom right? So you read top left, one, two, three, to bottom right, like that, by looking through the window. And this is a comic I made on the iPad. Do, do you know about the iPad? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You read it um, by, it uses uh, something in the iPad called the accelerometer, which can tell what angle it's tilting at. Mm -hmm. Um, and you read the comic by moving it, 
up there, as if you're looking through a window and then moving it down to read the second panel. We get lots of exercise from reading it. <laughs> so now I want to, you to start making some stories of your own, okay? I am going to give you these. But maybe you have to share them with the people next to you. I want you to take, um, let's say, two. То есть у вас есть, допустим, две карточки. У соседа есть две карточки. Вы обмениваетесь и придумываете историю. Понимаете, у кого есть уже готовая история? Жил был злой злодей. Он хотел поссорить двух лучших друзей. Они поссорились, один расстроился. Потом девушка рассказала всю маме, и она сказала, что она увидела картину и решила забыть все в прошлое начать. Смотрите, как здорово. То есть у вас карточек мало, а история так отдельная получается. То есть между первой карточкой и второй вы сами придумываете, что случилось. Например, между тем, как девочка разговаривает со своей мамой, а мальчик смотрит, э, видит гору, гору по телевизору, мы же не знаем, и как он вдруг уезжает, там, не знаю, в Африку, и э, все в его жизни отходить, да. Это же не сказано, мы же не видим, как он на самолет садится и улетает. Нет, вы сами это придумали. Это самое главное в комиксе. Как началась история? Жил один мужчина, женщина. Оле, Оле сказал, мы раздаемся, и она отмазала все пупочки, и она его убила. Потом она полетела в Англию, и при этом в Англии она встретила свою подружку, и подружка ей подарила подарок. So, uh, anybody else? Did anyone want to? At the back. Была очень умная, ну, зол, как это называется? Ботаник. Ботаник, короче, девочка, ботаник. И был мальчик, который был не такой умный, я думаю, он был довольно глупым, но ему нравилась эта девочка, а она, ну так как она считала, что она ботаник, самая умная, она его всячески сбегала и типа была к нему довольно холодна. А однажды этот мальчик очень постарался и получил а, высшую оценку, тут типа А со звездочкой. Прибежала та девочка-заучка и сказала, ах ты негодяй, ты изменял мне с другой умной девочкой и кинула в него цветком. В общем, она его очень сильно приветновала. Thank you very much. I just wanted to start you thinking about different ways which you can tell your own story and play around with, with the medium. My challenge to you is to take one piece of white paper and I want you to tell a story of a conflict between two people using only one bit of paper. Um, I want you to think, um, what am I going to do with this piece of paper? Am I Am I going to um, unfold it? Yes, yes, maybe. And then show a story as you unfold the paper? Or am I going to strip it and tell a story on two bits of paper? Or am I going to uh, cut a hole in it and you can look through to another piece of paper? Am I going to use a pen? Am I going to use a pencil? Uh, what will help you uh, to tell the story the best way about conflict between two people? That's my challenge to you if you decide to take it. Okay, thank you very much.